Hello, it's Carrie Bradford from Carrie Bradford Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can import multiple files from outside sources, such as from my site, into your Silhouette Studio library. In version 3, you can now do a multiple import of not only SVG files into the Designer Edition, but you can now do a multiple import of DXF files and JPEG files into the standard Studio Edition. I am so excited about this. I am using the Designer Edition, as you can see by it listing it up here. But if you don't have the Designer Edition, not to worry, you can do the multiple import of both DXF and JPEG files into the standard Studio Edition. So let's get started. Now when you receive an order from Carrie Bradford Studio, and probably from most other sources outside of the Silhouette store, more than likely you'll receive it in the form of a zip file. A zip file is just a way of compressing several files into one for easier handling. Like when you want to email a few files to someone or like when you get an order from someone. It is very important to keep a backup of these files. Maybe just save them on a jump drive that you have designated just for your downloads or in another directory or something. If you purchase from my site, you will have access to the downloads if you need them again, but I don't know what the rules are for everyone else, so it's better to be safe than sorry and just back it all up. So as you can see here, I have pulled over my list of files. This is a separate list of files outside of Silhouette Studio. On a Mac, you use Finder. On a PC, you may have something like My Computer or some other file management system. To unzip these files, if you're on a Mac and it doesn't automatically unzip for you after you download it, you can simply double click on the zip file and you can see it has now made a folder. It has uncompressed that folder from the main Happy Camper file that I had there. If you're on a PC, and this has changed over the years, but if you're using newer software, you should have a feature or button called Extract. That's what you're going to want to do in order to extract the files out of that zip file. Once you have it open, and I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that, you're going to see that there are a few different directories there. You have Illustrator version 8, DXF, this is just a general image of what's in the kit. You can have a PNG a set of PNG files and a set of SVG files. And these are the formats that I save my files in so that it can be used for a variety of ways, whether you're doing digital scrapbooking or if you're doing, if you're maybe using puzzles or something, you know, they would use the Illustrator version. If you're using the standard Studio Edition, you're going to use the DXF. And if you're using the Designer Edition, you're going to use SVG. So let's start with the DXF files because we have never been able to do this before and doing multiple, like a big old dump of all of the files into the library. As a reminder, I am using the Designer Edition, but on my laptop, I don't have the Designer Edition loaded and it works just the same. And you can't want to help but just shout out a big Yahoo for this. I'm, like I said, I'm really excited about this. So let's go into our library. And let's create ourselves a new directory. And if you like to sort them by style, you know, whether it's flowers or spring or fall or whatever, you can do that. For this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and just sort it out by the source, which would be from Carrie Bradford Studio. So I'm just going to click on the main My Library folder and then right click to create a new folder. And we're just going to call this KBS. Now let's grab our list of files and we're going to select them all. And you can do that by selecting the first file and holding down your shift key and selecting the last file and that selects them all. Control A would do the same thing to select all or Command A if you're on a Mac. Now we're going to click on our files and drag it over into the folder and then release the mouse. And you can see that they are just importing in. And oh, I'm just so excited about that. One other thing to note also is that it used to make a difference in where you dumped those files. It used to be that you had to dump them in this window. However, now you can come over here to the file folder and dump them in there as well. 
So that's how you can do the DXF. And also one other thing, when you do DXF, it comes in an outline form. You don't see it in a colored form like you do the SVG. Let's come up here and import our SVGs just for the sake of having them in there. Hold up, I clicked on the top one, hold down my shift key, click on the bottom and bring them over and then they'll just import as well and you can see they come in in color. So that is one advantage to having the designer edition is that you will get to see the colored version and I kind of like that. So that's always nice. Now there are two things that you need to know about the file usage when these the DXF and the SVG files import. If we open up, let's start with the DXF file. If you double click on that and open it up, you're going to see that these are all separate little pieces. It does not look at it as a complete image. It looks at it as in all these different tiny little pieces that make up the image. So I'm just going to undo and put all that back. Now for most purposes, just using the group option, if I right click and choose group, it will work fine for most cutting purposes. However, if you want to be able to use the modify tool, if you want to be able to weld or intersect or do any of these things, or maybe even if you're going to use the knife tool, cutting something apart, you're going to need to make sure that this is in a compound path. And what a compound path will do is it will tell Studio to look at all of these little inside pieces as a whole in the shape rather than just these mix of tiny little shapes that are just laying out on the screen. So for example, if we were to come and fill this with color, let's just go ahead and fill it with pink. You can see it treats everything. Everything gets filled with color. If it's there, it gets filled with color. It's just a design or a, you know, a shape on top of another shape. However, if we right click and make it a compound path, you can now see that Silhouette says, oh, hey, wait, that's a hole. That's not just a you know, triangle on top of this A, it is an actual hole in the design. So like I say, group probably works most of the time for what you're working with. But if you start wanting to mess around with that modify, you know, using subtract or weld or anything, it has to be in a compound path. So now with the SVG file, Let's come out and just, we're just going to grab this camp file. Maybe we'll just kind of move that one off to the side. When you open up an SVG file, Studio does not default to having the cut lines on. It doesn't matter the source. I've been hoping since forever for that to change, but it still hasn't. So all you need to do is go in and turn on the cut lines and you can just come up here to this little icon up here where it says cut settings and you can choose cut and then you can see it adds the cut lines. And now let's just do one last little thing with the import of the JPEGs. We're going to go ahead and bring our list of files over here. And I'm going to go to the JPEG or PNG. They're the, kind of the same format, just PNG does not have a back to it. And if we click and drag them over, whoops, you can see it's just importing all of those PNGs. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it's the designer edition or the standard studio edition. It works all just the same. And I'm so excited about that. And now I kind of feel like we're saving the best for last. It's just the, like the most fantastic thing that they added to version three. And that is the ability to add your own information to the designs in the library. I just want to say, can I get a hallelujah? Amen. I am so excited. And it is so easy to do now. If you just click on the image, and then right click and then do edit properties, you will get an edit properties window. So we are working on this deer head. So we don't need to add the word deer or head. We can just go in and we can say camp or camping, camping, and we can do animals and we can add our own keywords to search by. And that is, oh, so exciting. And now the artist you would put, I would probably put down the source. So you could put in KBS or Carrie Bradford studio, whatever. And then you can add the style of the cut or if it's a printing cut or a rhinestone, whatever, you can go ahead and add that as well. And then when you're done, if we right click and we say show properties, you can now see our search words. The description would be there if we had one, but since we don't have one, then it just shows at least the search words. So then we could just come up here and search for animals 
and it brings up the different animals that we have under that category. So that's really exciting that it's now just all instantaneous. You can add your search words as you go. It's fabulous. I love it. This is just one of the most exciting parts of the new version 3. So there you go. That's how you can work with files from outside sources. Version 3 made it so much simpler, and that's a great thing. Thanks for watching.